Patrice Evans here. All right, we're back. We're in part two in developing discernment and so that you can avoid the narcissistic woman. This is obviously good for anyone, but in particular, this channel is for you. If you're a young man between 25 and 32 and you are saved, you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and now you're ready for your helpmate. You know what you got, you know what God wants for you in life. You have an inkling, you know where you're supposed to be, but you're like, okay, Lord, who's gonna, who am I gonna share this life with, right? You're either in that journey, on that journey, or somewhere near it, right? So what we wanna learn is how to develop discernment. So the last video that we did in the series, we talked about having your space so that you can actually learn God's language. Learn the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit's language. The Bible is Jesus. The, he's a living word. And the Holy Spirit breathed the words to the people who wrote, just like he's breathing through me as I speak. And he breathes through pastors that are anointed and prophets and people who are anointed. And you, if you're doing something, this is very calm. This is extremely common in the kingdom. This is what we do in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we can't be down on this earth without our, our Father in heaven through Jesus Christ who died. We receive him as our Lord and Savior. We believe, we repent of our sins. We want to go his way. The only way to know his way is through the Bible and to study it and to let the Holy Spirit in us guide us in all truth and righteousness. We, we um, received him as our Lord and Savior. And now we have the Holy Spirit living in us to give us all of the things and all the tools that we need to be all we need to be to be whole. And God has given me the anointing to guide you and teach you and heal you and help you get to a place where you're whole, meaning you're exactly where you're supposed to be at this stage in history, in time, and in your life to get everything God had for you. The enemy wants to keep you not held up, parked, not with where you need to be, not healed, not overcome, and in your stuff so that you're really not where you need to be to get and be what God needs you to be to use you and to bless you. And what the enemy does is he rewards a lot of people and they look like they're, they're doing great, but he does it on purpose to make them think that they've arrived and they are whole when they're really not. This is where... I'll tell you more wisdom later. God just keeps throwing wisdom. So I'm going to get a whole video about that um, if the Lord decides to bring it back to my memory. But there's a lot of, re a lot of uh, issues that come with success, outward success, when you haven't been healed. So praise the Lord that he puts us through a process, um, a wilderness and a process on, in the kingdom that we're not crazy about. But lately, many of us have been going through it and come out of it. And now we understand this process so we can bring you through it to make you whole. Hallelujah. Amen. So the second thing God wants me to share with you in order to de develop discernment to avoid a narcissistic woman, which is obviously what God really wants you to avoid because I've been through it. I've been able to overcome, um, narcissistic abuse and jealousy in family career and church as a Hayoka empath, which is the highest level impact. And he's given me so many gifts that it's just hard to wrap it in one. You have to experience working with me to know what I'm capable of doing for you. But I'm going to give as much as I can here. But the only way to really know how I can bless you is to actually know me and to actually work with me like the people in my life who can can testify for it of it. So, and you got to let the spirit guide you and use your discernment to find out who I am. Amen. Hallelujah. So I don't want anything in the comments saying all these low level, you know, flesh comments. Use your discernment even with me to speak to me. The Lord will show you who I am. Don't go by your sight. The Bible says that go by the spirit, test the spirits. Amen. And I'm going to show you how to do that. This is how you do it. So step two, um, <clears throat> You got your, you got your space. You're with the Lord. Now you're doing it on a regular basis. And what you're starting to notice is in that space, there is an anointing now. And there's a, a feeling you have, you're experiencing a peaceful time with Jesus and how it feels to feel peace and joy. And this unusual feeling that you didn't feel before you were saved. It's a heavenly thing you're doing. You have angels now that are around you. There's a feeling that is beyond your flesh. It is a knowingness in your mind and in your spirit and in your conscious, in your soul. You are experiencing heaven in that space. And the more you meet Jesus there through the Holy Spirit to get to your father in heaven, we pray to father God 
through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit can give you utterances. It can give you speaking in tongues. It can give you all kinds of things, but it ignites anything in you that you need to be able to connect with your father in heaven through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And to read that Bible, which is Jesus. It is, he's the word. It, the only way you can read the Bible is through the Holy Spirit and through salvation. So, um, so this is how you can experience peaceful time with Jesus, how it feels. Notice when Jesus is talking to you, you can tell now when he's talking to you through, through things and he guides you to something in this from, from the spirit. So now that you've been spend, spending this time, you're not just reading the Bible anymore. You're starting to notice a knowingness. Maybe God is speaking to you. You feel like he is. You feel like he said something and you should write that down. You might even be getting a dream or when you wake up, you get this vision of something. So now you're connecting with him. You are saved. You have a gift. You have one of the five gifts probably. And you definitely have the nine fruits of the spirit. You're capable of now always being or always in any situation calling on the Holy Spirit to bring up love, peace, kindness, goodness, patience, self-control, for uh, uh, faithfulness, all the things that is hard to do in the flesh that the world can't do, we're capable of doing that. I want you to put a note to the side because we're going to come back to this. Anyone who has received Jesus as their Lord and Savior has the fruits of the Spirit, the nine fruits of the Spirit. They're capable of being loving even when someone's unlovable. Even when things are the worst it's being, we can have self-control when others can't. We can have long suffering and wait on the Lord when it seems like it's taking forever. We have the Holy Spirit to give us the ability if we allow it. Amen. We have the ability to have be faithful in marriage. Even if you couldn't in the flesh in the past, now with the Holy Spirit, you can be faithful. These are the fruits of the Spirit that you get automatically once you say the prayer of salvation truly from your heart. You automatically have the Holy Spirit in you and he gives you the fruits of the Spirit. Nine fruits of the Spirit, okay? Can you just write that down and put it to the side? We're coming back to that, okay? So you have that. Because you have that, now it gives you the patience to sit. You can't say to yourself, I don't have the patience to sit and read the Bible because you have the ability through the Holy Spirit to do it. You call on the Holy Spirit to do it. It's a great plan what God did here because he has the Father who was the first on the scene to talk to um, Adam and Eve in the, in the cool of the night when they were um, before they sinned and speak, spoke to them. And he was always there from the, in the new test in the old Testament with his chosen one. And then when his son came on the scene to save us, the second Adam, he was sent here to die so that we are not going to go to hell because the hell was made for the devil and his demons. And God's like, no, I don't want my precious humans that I made, even though they turn on me, even though they want to get other gods and they don't like me and they don't treat me right. And they're so mean to my saints that I love. I still love them. They know it's not what they do and they are not supposed to be going to hell. So they're mine and I want to send my son to save them. Give them an opportunity to come to me. But when my son leaves, God, the son leaves. Now he's in charge of us and he's like, listen, where I go, you can, I go, but I'm going to send you a comforter. He's not leaving us here. There's a perfect plan here. So Jesus is in heaven on the right-hand side of God the Father. Of course, they're omnipotent and omnipresent. However, that's where he resides, and that's where he um, reigns in his kingdom right now that's coming, and that has it's ever, everlasting. He is on the right-hand side of God the Father in heaven. He sent the Holy Spirit to be down on this earth so that we are not alone. And he's, what a perfect plan to put him in us so that now when we're going about in life, the Holy Spirit can give me what I need to say to you right now. You just bring it to mind. But how did it come so easily for me? I've built this muscle of discernment. I'm, I've been in my quiet place and I've been able to hear him and read the word. And now it's renewed my mind and it can come up as I need it. So the Bible's written in my heart and the Ten Commandments, all the commandments are written in my heart with the Holy Spirit. That's what's happening to you. As you spend time with the Lord, you're able to actually see these scriptures with your own eyes and really make it food in your body. And it becomes one with you, it becomes who you are. You renew your mind to think like the Bible. Amen. And it's not legalism. It is not all that other stuff. It is the real, true, living God that is guiding you into all truth and righteousness. Amen. So when you spend time doing that, you start to listen to the Holy Spirit and he, you can hear him. You know how you know somebody. Come on. 
Now that you've read that Bible, how do you know it's the Holy Spirit talking? They talk about test the spirits, test the spirit. How do you know that the Holy Spirit's talking to you? As a teacher, I'd love for you to tell me. It's because you've been hearing him, but you've been studying how he talks. You've been reading the Bible and you know how the Holy Spirit talks. You've read John. You've read Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John at the very least, right? And there's a way that the, that the Holy Spirit speaks. And the way Jesus speaks in the, in the Gospels. Jesus speaks a certain way. You want to get the Bibles with the red on it if you need to. So you know that's the, the Holy Spirit. That's Jesus speaking. You know, when Jesus is speaking, this is not hearsay. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit has breathed every word in that Bible. 66 books only. There are no more or less than those books. They are cross-referenced to show the proof of the prophecies. It's all exactly what it needs to be. It's very complete. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So how do you know when the Holy Spirit's speaking to you? Very likely he might give you a scripture. Write that down. As a baby Christian that's learning discernment, he may bring a scripture to mind. He may say a scripture and you recognize that it's him because you just read it. So the Bible is part of this whole package deal, if you will, that when you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when you come into the family of Christ, it's the, it's the um, owner's manual. This is the book that you need for, the, um, for if you were going to be trained for your job and you have a job in the kingdom. Everyone's going to have a job. You have to get your nine fruits of the spirit. You have to read your Bible, get fed, renew your mind. It's like we're getting you ready, you know? And so then there is some, we're not supposed to be unequally yoked in the, in the kingdom. So that's where we need to be listening for each other. When you're listening to me speak, do I sound like I'm aligned with the Bible when I'm talking? Does it sound very biblical, everything I'm saying? So the only way to know that is if you've been reading the Bible, not if you've been reading it from your brain, the way I did as an English major, but no, from, <clears throat> from the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit can show you who I am. So many people, if you see in the comments, they say all these, all these things that are off the wall, outside of the 66 books, outside of what the Lord would really say. Those are people who are the devil's agents that only know the Bible here. Enough, enough to do damage. They're not our sisters and brothers in Christ. That's how I discern that. I know that. I can see that. I'm at a high level with this discernment because I've been doing it for so many years and I am born that way and the Hayoka, the um, high level Hayoka where I can read people and all that. But everyone can have this discernment. This is a gift from the Lord. It's one of the gifts from the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> it is a unique gift that you can actually ask, a spiritual gift that you can be asking for. Amen. So you want to ask for wisdom. You want to ask for discernment. Amen. And this is what I want to show you what you're doing. As, so now we know that anything you hear in your spirit, it's going to be confirmed because it sounds like the Bible. It is aligned with the Bible. Whenever you're not sure about something, see if it's aligned with the Bible. Amen. And not your thinking, the spiritual wisdom that God, the Holy Spirit has revealed to you about the Bible. So the Holy Spirit in me and in you recognizes itself. It doesn't go off of its own script, let's, if you will, you know, and that's how you know I'm your sister in Christ because it doesn't go off. It's kind of simple here, guys. We, mem we memorize it if we want to, but we also put it in our minds and our spirit and renew ourselves to believe it fully. We believe the Bible in faith, everything about it that it was breathed and it's real and it actually has proof of everything in there has it's really happened even if you don't like it or don't understand it you just never will understand it maybe you'll go to heaven not understanding some things like the trinity we don't understand it but we know in faith that it's real there's so much in the bible like that because you're not ready you haven't grown there's so many things that today i'm doing because the lord did it to me made me got took it out of my life that i didn't understand why you couldn't do it I didn't get it, you know, but he took it away, you know? So I can talk about that another time. You can, you know, let me know in the comments if you want me to talk about that. But so I had to be careful when I didn't know and I wasn't convicted, which is what the Holy Spirit does for you. I had, couldn't preach on it too strongly until I was sure what God really believed about it. So some things you're just going to leave open. You don't have to know everything because you're not God. Remember, we are discovering, not deciding. 
We are not of the world. The world thinks they know everything, know-it-alls. And God told you that message in the last video. So we are not coming to this, guys, like we know everything. We're coming in like we know nothing, like a clean slate saying, Lord, I'm your vessel. Please show me, guide me. I'm surrendering to you. And the biggest thing is you are surrendering to the Holy Spirit minute by minute. You are bowing down to your Father in heaven through Jesus Christ, the King of Kings. You're saying, Jesus, you are the King of Kings. There is no democracy in our kingdom. It is not like the world. It's an upside down kingdom. And he gets to tell you what to do. And he does it through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit tells you what to do. And you are blessed to get to a place where you can really hear the Holy Spirit saying, nope, do this. That is an anointed blessing. You do not want to push that away because there's so much deception out here. And there's so many, if there's 10 people selling a course, how would you know which one to go to? How, how y'all living without discernment? You can't, not in these last days. This is literally your eyes and ears. This is so essential. The Holy Spirit is revealing to me that it's a, no wonder you guys love when I'm talking about this, because you, you're craving it because there's so much out there. How do you know who's true? Who's not true? So many beautiful women who's real. You can't say, um, every pretty woman isn't good because I, God has blessed me to have good looks and I am the real deal. I'm a, a full package. So there's many women out there like me. So you can't say that. You can't say, you know what I mean? If she's sexy, she's bad. No, because God has blessed me with that and blessed you with that possibly. So that's not, you can't go by like absolutes with this in the sense that it's flesh absolutes. You can, the only absolutes you should be using are the ones that are the one and true living God, the Bible. That's the, uh, that is absolute truth. The Bible is absolute truth. The Father, Son, the Holy Spirit being God in three Three and one, that is absolute. And the Bible is absolute. That's the only absolute that there is. There is no absolute in this world but that. And what he says, you are. And what God says, the enemy is. And what he's capable of doing. When you want to learn something, you better find it in the Bible. So, the Holy Spirit is in you. And what God wants you to do, what the Bible talks about, what we're talking about, what we're deciding to do from this point on, it's called walking in the Spirit. And what that is, is that you're surrendering minute by minute, day by day to this voice in you that is the Holy Spirit. And the way you know it is the Holy Spirit is because it is, it is aligned with the Bible. Not only is it aligned with the Bible, but it's aligned with others who are also walking in the Spirit and reading the Bible. They can help you because they feel it in their spirit, the peace in their spirit about it. So sometimes you want to take it to someone who's not because they're a pastor. A lot of pastors aren't even saved. Not because it's somebody who said they're saved. Because remember, we're discerning narcissism. Narcissists. Very likely you, this is going to get a little deep, get ready. Very likely you are attracted to narcissists because your parent was. Or somebody who, who you're about to go to for advice is. So be careful. You're looking out here for where the narcissists are. But the reason they're attracted to you and the reason you're having a problem with them is because there's somebody right in your circle that is that you actually trust. So you need to be using that for them too. This is where the coaching comes in, where I can help you heal from those people who have been so close that you can't really pull from them. You can't really see clearly. You can't move forward because it's holding you back. You can't be whole if you are parked. You can't be whole if you're parked. And this isn't something that you could just will on yourself to do. You literally need an anointing of someone to help you get through that. You really do. I've needed that. I've needed an anointing of prophetess to minister to me. We all need it. We're part of the body of Christ and we're here for each other. So we need to be here to receive as much as to give. Amen. So when I give you, you're going to receive it and then you're going to go give and then they're going to receive. You know, you need people to receive what you're here to give. So you need to be receiving what I'm here to bless you with. Hallelujah. So what you're doing, what we're talking about here, and I've talked about throughout my channel for many years, is what I, what is, it's like me in a nutshell is, and this is where my, my kindred spirit with my pastor, before I even became a, a member of his church, um, Charles Stanley, is that we both believe in walking in the spirit. God must have put that in our spirit to be ministers that, that teach people how to walk in the spirit. And that's what I'm teaching you to do. So you're surrendering daily and the, what you're listening to is you're listening for the words from that you've been learning from the Bible. Then you're, you're always, and, and when you are in that place, you feel this feeling of peace when you're in it. 
and it's just this you know that it's it's peaceful because you just came out of the world and you had torment you had depression you had anxiety you had all these other things and confusion and just this uneasiness but when you're in that quiet place reading your word and time with the holy spirit you feel at peace and when you surrender which goes against your body to do that these days we don't want anybody above us and we don't want to surrender to anyone but when you do in the kingdom that's the only person you should be surrendering to, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit that's in you. You know, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, and what the Bible says. And if someone sins something, you know it's aligned with the Bible. That's God speaking. All right? God's bringing to my memory that some, one of the prophets always says this, and she got it straight from the Bible. My sheep hear my voice. How do you know it's him? Because you'll know in your spirit, this is the shepherd talking. You'll know it because it's lined up with the word. God has already put it in your spirit. You just, you have a knowingness. This is for me. I know that this is for me. And I know that that is my father in heaven. I know this is the Holy Spirit speaking to me. It's like a newborn baby. And my, my granddaughter, when she was born, she crawled up newborn to nurse. She knew instinctively how to get to her nursing, um, to my daughter's um, breast to nurse. Amen. So you're going to just know naturally when you hear your, your father speaking, when you hear your shepherd, you're going to hear it in your spirit because now you have the Holy Spirit in you. That's the first thing. And then you're going to listen to the words. And if they're aligned with your spirit and it gives you peace in your spirit and it's aligned with the word, that's your discernment right there, y'all. That's how you discern. You're going to do that with what you see, what you hear, everything. And there's this peace that you have upon you, right? We're going to talk about what you're going to do with that peace upon you and how that helps you with discerning. All right, I'm gonna show, tell, talk to you more about that in the last video, the third one. I hope this is blessing you. I really do, because, and I hope you have your book and you have your journal and you're writing this stuff down. All right, I look forward to talking to you in the next video. Okay, bye.